title of the song tonight is Whatever It Takes. Amen. May this song be a blessing to everyone.
35 to 41. And let us read these verses responsibly. I will be reading verse 35, and then you read verse 36, and then in verse 41, we will be reading all together. Please stand with me, please. In verse 35, I will be reading verse 35. And the same day, when the event was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? All together in verse 41, And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. <coughs> May God add blessing the reading of his word. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come before the throne of grace tonight, asking for your moving in our midst. O oh, Holy Spirit, move in a very special way in our midst. Meet the needs of these people, dear God. Bless this thy word that has been preached tonight. Father, we glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is it. A preacher came to the Philippines and he was from Ohio. And he was the one who was the speaker in the camp meeting in the Philippines. And then this was he was thinking about the message he was about to preach. And he wants to bring a message from Ohio that would inspire the Filipino people. <laughs> and he thinks that it was a blessing to praise an Ohio outline. Then he praised an Ohio outline that O-H-I-O. -O. <laughs> Every letter of that word, he preached up for about 30 minutes. So to make the long story short, after he preached the message for about two hours, after the preaching, a lady approached him saying, Preacher, thank God you're from Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if that pastor was in West Virginia. <laughs> Maybe he preached all day, all night. <laughs> Just to remove my... <laughs> but tonight I would like to present the subject. The Bible says in verse 35, let us pass over unto the other side. Amen. That is the mission to be accomplished. Jesus and his disciples were crossing the Red Sea of Galilee, the Sea of Galilee, but after a long day of teaching and preaching, Jesus fell asleep. But as the disciples roll, they find themselves suddenly in the middle of a ferocious storm. But if you notice in Matthew chapter 14, it's open your Bible in chapter 14, in Matthew in verse 22, the Bible says, and straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side, which he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray, and when the evening was come, he was there alone. 
but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. In Matthew chapter 14, Jesus constrained his disciples, and the disciples were by themselves. But in this chapter, in Mark chapter 4, verse 35, the Lord was with the disciples, and he said to the disciples in verse 35, Let us pass over unto the other side. Amen. Thank God, glory to his name, we are on the other side of the world. Amen. From the Philippines up to here, probably we, probably we flew for about 26 hours. The time now in the Philippines is 7.30 in the morning, Friday morning. But we are still here, Thursday evening. So you see, God has his own plan. Whether in the Philippines or in the USA, thank God we have the same Christ. Amen. The Christ who preached here in America is the same Christ we preach in the Philippines. Right. Amen. What the the Bible you are holding right now is a King James version, Amen. and we are using King James version Amen. in the Philippines. We are not Amen. using NIV because that Bible is not inspired version. Amen. Amen. We are using Amen. King James version, Amen. and the goal is to go to the other side. Praise God, we are now on the other side, and that is a goal, because in coming to the USA, it's very difficult because you go through a lot of process. It's very difficult to get visas to come here. And one victory we have is that we have given a visa to come to your country. And that's a mission that complex. But this one, my dear beloved in the Lord, there is a mission to be accomplished together with the Lord. And sometimes together we are in minority group. I would like to say that we are in majority group because one with God is always a majority. Right. Amen. 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 So you notice number one when the Bible says, And the same day when the event was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the others. If you know the person who is speaking, you probably follow him faithfully without any doubt. Mm. And because of this situation, notice number one, the person speaking. If you just know the attributes of the Lord Jesus Christ, my dear beloved, you know number one, he is omnipotent. He is all powerful and nothing is impossible with God. Amen. And he is also omniscient. He's an all-knowing God. He knew everything about you and me. Right. And he is also an immutable God. He is unchanging. He is the same yesterday, right. today, and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty beloved in the Lord is an omnipresent God. He is everywhere. He is always on the rescue. Right. And he promised that in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5, he will not leave thee nor forsake me. Right. But in Matthew chapter 20, the great commission, he promised, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. That was some people are afraid to flow on an airplane because the promise said, and lo, not high. <laughs> <laughs> There's a vision, and this is a mission to be accomplished because with our two naked eyes, sight is a function of the eyes, but while vision is a function of the heart. Mm. Thank God. You see the drive of vision? It is the vehicle that will take you to places. And it is the key that opens the doors of opportunity. Visions will drive you to your dreams. Right. Oh, my dear beloved, it's sad to say some have no vision. Right. Some have lost their vision. Some has limited vision. But thanks be to God, glory to his name, some has 20-20 vision. Amen. Amen. And I just thank the Lord for this church because you have 20-20 vision for mission. 
Amen. And always, my dear beloved, God's heartbeat is always on mission. Right. See, vision is very important. When I remove this eye glasses, I can read my Bible. And I just thank the Lord for this optometrist for giving me good vision. Amen. Amen. To us Christians, God gives us good vision to Amen. 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 See what? When I use this, I read very clearly my Bible. So you have to have good vision. Oh my dear beloved in the Lord. Vision calls people to action. Amen. Yes, if you just know the person speaking, you will not be afraid following him. Right. Why? Because the Bible says, come unto me. Jesus is always speaking and inviting people to come unto him. Right. And he even commanded us to go. And go means in the military or in the office, says go is general order. But in the Bible, when you say the word go, it is God's order. Right. Yes. Oh, my dear beloved the Lord, if we just know the person <clears throat> who is speaking, then we should follow him. And the only answer to that command is yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. But number two, even though the Lord Jesus directing the lives of these disciples to go to the other side, there are problems in the midst of that mission. And in verse 37, in Mark chapter 4, see in verse 36, And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ship. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. The song that was sent while ago, whatever it takes. Yeah, it is a common song, simple song, and, but it's very hard to follow sometimes. It takes the grace of God. Right. It takes faith to follow God. Right. Because in our own, we, have, we are limited people. Limited abilities, limited knowledge, but with God, we have an unlimited resources. Right. Yes. Oh, my dear beloved, the problem was specified in verse 27, 37, and there arose a great storm of wind. You know, my dear beloved, last three weeks ago in the Philippines, we the place in the Philippines was heat by a super typhoon. This super typhoon called it devastates a lot of crops, infrastructures in the Philippines. Meaning to say, all the cost, probably the cost of this electricity or topple down, that's why we lost communication to our daughter. So we don't have any contact with our daughter, but I do believe God is in control. Amen. But the Bible says, my dear beloved in the Lord, even what manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him. If the nature obeys the Lord, how much we are. We are a unique creation of God. Right. When God created everything, he just created by his voice. He just commanded everything and something exists. But when he begins to create man, oh my dear beloved, he just all that creation, and it was indeed a very unique creation. We are a, we are created a unique person. Amen. Right. Everybody is a unique in creation right. because even our thumb mark are unique. There's no like your thumb mark. It's a unique. Right. So in spite of this problem, my dear beloved, what the Lord creates, He controls. Whatever God puts into motion, He can perfectly control. Amen. It was the Lord's idea to get them into the ship and sail into the storm. And often when we sail in the storm of life, our first thought is that we must be outside the will of God. Remember, Jesus constrained His disciples and He was with His disciples. Amen. 
meaning to say they are perfectly in the will of God. So that's the first impression of people when they encounter problems. Maybe they are outside the will of God. Not really. Jonah has a sound sleep when he flees from the presence of the Lord. But he was outside the will of God. The command to Jonah is go to Nineveh. But instead of going to Nineveh, he went the other, the other way. He went to Tarshish. But he was outside the will of God. And the reason of that problem, my dear beloved, the Lord put them in storm is to teach them, and this is a learning experience for the disciples. Right. Notice number one, the rebuke in verse 39. And so verse 38, and it was in the inner part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Yes, of course, Jesus cares. Right. Because in verse 39, and he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea. And he said unto the sea, Peace, be still. Yeah. The disciples had tried growing, worrying, and crying, but nothing happened until they called on the Lord. Three simple words, Peace, be still. Yeah. Are you troubled in life? Jesus said, he is the Prince of Peace. Right. The problem, why we don't have peace? Because we don't have the Prince of Peace in our hearts. Right. In order for us to have that peace in our hearts, we have to accept the Prince of Peace in our hearts. And that is the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. Yes. And you are serving a God who is able to speak peace to your storm. Right. And let us cast our storm of life in Jesus because the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. You know what? Amen. Doubt creates mountains, but faith removes mountains. Right. That's the rebuke. But notice the response in verse 39. Peace be still, and the wind ceases. That is the response of the wind. However, the Lord will often allow the storm to continue in our lives until it has accomplished all its purpose. Right. He has a purpose in life. But notice number three, the relief in verse 3. 39 again. And the Bible says, And there was a great calm. Amen. 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 Oh, there was a great calm. And the Bible says in John 14, 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Amen. A church with Jesus on board can make an high, can, an, can make an impact in the entire Christian community. When I fall, he lifts me up. When I fail, he forgives. When I am weak, he is my strength. When I am afraid, he is my courage. When I am lost, he is the way. When I am hurt, he heals. And when I am broken, he mends. Yes, my dear beloved, when Christ is in the boat of your heart, there is always peace. Notice between John chapter 14, verse 27. John 14, and in verse 27, the Bible says, Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Oh, my dear beloved. And the Bible said, and let it be. Neither let it be afraid. Yes, when Christ is in the boat of your heart, there is always peace. Amen. When Christ is in the boat of the church, even the gates of hell shall not prevail. Right. against it. Yes. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, oh my dear beloved, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, the Bible says, and I say also unto Peter, unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against him. Amen. So the importance of church Church is not complete without 
you are in it. Right. You cannot even read the church without you are in it. Right. That's very important because you are important to the church. Amen. The church will be completed until you are in it. Oh, my dear beloved, when Christ is in the boat of the scriptures, there is no controversy. Right. His word is settled in heaven. The wind and waves of criticism will never change the Bible. Right. We have the eternal Bible. Amen. This is the word of God, and this is the mind of God. Amen. When Christ is in the boat of providence, we have to claim Philippians 4, 19, but my God Amen. shall supply all you need according to his scriptures and glory right. by Christ Jesus. I remember, my dear beloved, when I surrendered my life in full-time ministry, I never see that Jesus forsake me. Right. Why? Yes, there are problems in life, there are difficulties in life, there are hardships in life, but... Jesus never forsake me. He's there all the time. Amen. But I would like you to see why the mission is to be accomplished. And the Bible says in verse 40, And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? But notice chapter 5 and verse 1. And they came over unto the other side. Amen. It is indeed a mission accomplished. Amen. Together with Jesus, everything is fine. Right. Even though there are problems in the midst of that mission trip, still they reached the place. The plan succeeded. Yes, there are winds and waves of discomfort. There are winds and waves of disappointment. There are winds and waves of discontentment. And there are winds and waves of discouragement. Because the winds and waves are trying to contain us, trying to limit us, and trying to stop us from developing to serve our God. Right. But think about this for a minute, for a moment. If the disciples did not continue to row until they reached their destination, maybe, my dear beloved, they did not experience or witness what the Lord Jesus to the unclean spirit. Notice in verse 2. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. When they reached their destination, it was indeed a mission accomplished, but the mission keeps on going. Amen. When you reach your destination, the mission keeps on keeping on. Amen. Who had this dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the feathers broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when... He saw Jesus afar off. He ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of that man, thou unclean spirit. And he said, what? And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he answered him, saying, My name is Legion. For we are men. And if he sought him, must that he would not send them away of the country. But notice in verse 15. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. 
Amen. And then you were afraid. See? Amen. When you just share the word of God to somebody, we can contribute a lot of change in our community. That's right. Because one soul, angels in heaven are rejoicing. That's right. Yes. Yes. If everybody one bring one, right. would be ready fast in our community. Right. And again, my dear beloved in the Lord, thank you for your love and concern. Your support and prayers are highly appreciated. Thank you so much.